This project is sponsored by Touchtone Home Products. To learn more about the Whisper Lift 2 that I'm using in this project, click on the link in the description and visit touchstonehomeproducts.com. Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to be building this TV lift cabinet. I'll be using the Whisper Lift 2 made by Touchstone Home Products. It's a really quiet, strong lift, and it's really easy to install. Now, if you like this design, when you buy the lift, it will come with SketchUp plans for this exact design. I designed this to match the storage bed that I built a few months ago. So if you don't like the design, you can still follow along and then change the project however you like, because basically we're talking about a plywood box here that I've dressed up with some molding. I used a piano hinge to attach the top. If you don't like that, and the reason why you might not like that is anything that you have on the top when the TV comes out will fall off the top. I like that because I don't like anything on the top of furniture. But if you want it to be flat, the lift comes with a bracket, and that way the top of the cabinet will remain flat, and anything that you have on top should stay on top. So enough said, let's go ahead and get started. The first step in this project is to make a face frame. I'm using poplar wood for the face frame because poplar wood is a good wood if you're making a painted project. And I'm using pocket hole screws to build the face frame. Along with the poplar face frame, I'm using 3 quarter inch birch plywood to build the cabinet. So now that the face frame is built, I'll start cutting the plywood to size. Okay, well now I've got all of my parts cut to size and I'm ready to start building the cabinet. I'll get started by first pre-drilling and countersinking holes in the sides and then I'll attach the sides to the face frame in the back using a little wood glue and inch and five eighths screws. I'm attaching the sides to the face frame and back and I like to first use an inch and a half nail and the nail gun that holds everything in place and then I'll come back later and use screws for a stronger joint. With the sides attached to the front and back, it's time to attach the bottom. I tack everything in place first with an inch and a half nail, and then come back with inch and five eighths screws for a stronger joint. For the styles and rails that create the flat panel, first I'll rip the parts to width, then set up a stop lock on the miter saw and cut everything to length. I'm using half inch MDF to create flat panels on the sides of the cabinet and the back of the cabinet. What I wanted to talk about now is the styles and rails. I want all the styles and rails to be three and a half inches wide. So you have to take into account the thickness of the material. So the styles on the sides of the cabinet are only three inches. But when I add the styles to the front of the cabinet, that adds a half of an inch, making the styles three and a half inches. So it's one of those things that can be a little confusing if you don't build cabinets every day, and I wanted to take a minute and point that out. First I'll attach the styles, making sure the top of the style is flush with the top of the cabinet. Once I've attached all of the styles, I'll cut the rails to fit, and I'm attaching the styles and rails with wood glue and 18 gauge 1 inch long nails. The next step is to trim out the flat panels and I'm using 3 8 quarter round and I'm attaching the quarter round with wood glue and 3 quarter inch nails in the pin nailer.
I just cut the access panel and that's going to fit on the inside of the cabinet and eventually I'm going to make it look like two doors. But before I do that, I want to attach a piece of wood on the inside of the cabinet that's going to create a tray and that way the panel will drop into the tray and be held in place with a few twist tabs. I'm using a piece of quarter inch plywood as a spacer and I'll just make sure that I keep this piece of wood flush with the quarter inch plywood and I'll be attaching the wood at the right height. This is a piece of scrap wood that measures a sixteenth of an inch thick and I'm going to use this to trace a line all the way around the access panel so when I attach the molding to create the fake doors I'll have the same reveal all the way around the panel. For a more detailed video that covers some of the tricks to achieve perfect inside miter cuts, click on the link in the description. I'm using a slight round over on the side of the cabinet to soften the edge and give the cabinet a more modern look and feel. The next step is to make molding to finish off the top of the cabinet and hide the edge of the plywood and the MDF. The molding measures three quarters of an inch by an inch and three quarters and has a slight roundover made with a roundover bit in the router. I'm attaching the molding to the top of the cabinet with wood glue and inch and three quarter nails. At the back where the hinge will be, I'm adding inch and five eight screws for a little more support. Under the molding at the top of the cabinet, I'm using more of the same three eighths quarter round. Now I'm ready to start installing the lift and I'm going to need a hole in the back of the cabinet at each side for a power source. I'm measuring off the side of the cabinet 5 inches, the back of the cabinet 3 and a quarter inches, and I'll drill an inch and 5 eighths hole. Now I'm attaching the two mounting boards to the back of the cabinet. This is what the lift will be attached to. The boards measure 2 inches by an inch deep and I'm attaching them to the back of the cabinet, 19 and a half inches, pulling from the side of the cabinet. So if I pull from this side of the cabinet, I'm at 19 and a half inches on the outside edge. And if I pull from this side of the cabinet, I'm at 19 and a half inches on the outside edge. The next step is to make the walnut baseboard molding and I'll get started by ripping the material at three inches. After ripping the material at three inches, I set the fence at a half of an inch, raised the blade, and changed the angle of the blade to six degrees. Next, I'll use the router to put a slight round over on the outside edge of the molding. For the top of the cabinet, I'm using 3 quarter inch birch plywood. I used a walnut laminate over the plywood. To see the detailed video where I make the walnut top, click on the link in the description.
Okay, well, it's been a few days. You can see that I've painted the cabinet. I also added some nylon dome to the bottom of the cabinet and some lifts. It makes it easy to move the cabinet around and it also makes it possible to fit the electrical cord underneath the cabinet. I finished the walnut baseboard and the top with a white bond varnish and now I'm ready to finally put the cabinet together and install the lift. Well, now I'm finally ready to install the lift into the cabinet. And one of the really nice things about the Whisper lift is not only is it a very quiet and strong lift, it's really simple to install. I'll install it with two screws through the brackets in the back of the cabinet and five screws through the mounting plate at the bottom. Before attaching the mounting bracket to the bottom of the cabinet, it makes sense to raise the lift a little bit to make room for the drill and the impact driver. I'm using a piano hinge to attach the top to the cabinet, and this is called a VIX bit. It's a self-centering drill bit, and I'll use this to pre-drill holes for the screws. I decided to go with a very simple design for the door pulls. They're made of walnut and they measure five inches by three quarters by three quarters with a five degree angle ripped on the outside edge. Okay, well that was the last step and finally I'm finished with this project. Tomorrow I'm going to bring it in the house, I'll install the TV and we'll see how it looks in the room. Then I'll just make sure all the screws are tight, not too tight, you don't want to over tighten the screws. And next I'll drop the TV onto the cross brackets. All right, well, I'm really happy to have this cabinet out of the shop and in the room. My wife is just in here and she's really excited about the way the whole room is coming together. This is, I think this is the third project in this whole room renovation project. I started this about six months ago by replacing the trim and painting the room. Then I made the storage bed. Then I made this painting. My wife wanted a winter landscape. I used walnut on the frame so it would match the top of the TV lift cabinet and the trim on the bed. I want to thank Touchstone Home Products for making this project possible. Click on the link in the description to learn more about the Whisper Lift 2. It really is a super strong, quiet lift that's just really easy to install. Now I've got this cabinet up tight against the wall because this is relatively a small room, but you could also put the cabinet up against the end of the bed and it could be an end of the bed cabinet. And I finished the back of the cabinet because I'm not exactly sure where this cabinet will end up five or ten years down the road so that way the cabinet could also work as a room divider. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, I'm back because I wanted to talk about the plans for a minute. I just saw the plans for the first time yesterday and I built this project a little while ago because there was a lot of moving parts to it. I had to make the cabinet, make the video, make the plans and then send all that to Touchstone. And they just sent me the plans and I was just kind of blown away because my plans for my builds are usually just pretty simple drawings with a cut list. This is a 20 page plan with 
material list, cut list, exploded drawings, and it's just really cool. It's really cool to see my drawings turned into that. And the plans are free, so definitely click the link and check that out. And it is a simple build. You'll see when you look at the plans. So this is something I'm going to try to bring to my bigger projects in the future because I think after seeing professional plans like that, it just it makes my plans look kind of silly. So hopefully I will get that going and my future builds will include professional plans. So as always, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.